So everybody, in this video, we're going to talk about transformations of quadratic functions. So before we get into the transformations, let's remember what is a quadratic function. And it's just a function that can be written in the form f of x equals a times a quantity of x minus h squared plus k. And we know there are other forms. This form is specifically called vertex form. And there is a standard form. There's an intercept form. There are other forms that we can use to represent a quadratic function. So I would say the biggest takeaway is you're looking for an exponent of a 2 on your x variable. Okay. Once we graph a quadratic function, the shape that it gives us is a parabola, and that's our U-shaped graph, which it could open up or it could open down. And in this video, we're going to talk about six transformations, and we're going to look kind of at an example for each one of these six and talk through them and see how we can identify the transformation from the equation and also what it looks like in the graph. So the first one is a horizontal translation. So what that's going to do is just shift or slide our parabola left or right. Vertical translation, once again, a shift or a slide, but this time we're gonna go up or down. Uh, reflection in the x-axis, so if we have a parabola that's opening up, if we reflect in the x-axis, now it's opening down, and vice versa. Reflect in the y-axis, um, if we have a parabola whose vertex is on the y-axis, then the reflection is actually just the same exact parent function, y equals um, x squared. Uh, but if we were to shift our graph right or left and then reflect, over the y-axis, it would change our position a little bit, okay? The fifth one is a horizontal stretch or a shrink. So that's kind of like two transformations actually in one there. We have a horizontal stretch, which just think like you're pulling something out, so our graph is gonna get open wider. Um, and then also a horizontal shrink, so think about pushing in or compressing in from the sides. So it's gonna get a little more narrow. Last one is a vertical stretch um, and also a vertical shrink. So think about vertical stretch would be like if you're grabbing the parabola and pulling it up, so we're gonna get more narrow. And then a vertical shrink, we'll also think about like a compression. So that'd be like pushing down from the top and up from the bottom and our graph's gonna be opening wider, okay? So let's talk a little bit more in depth about each of these and we're gonna start with our translations. So over here on the left side of the screen, we have a horizontal translation and in the middle we have a vertical translation and then we're gonna actually combine those two on the right for our example. So we have f of x equals x squared, that's our parent function, that's in white and that's what we see graphed in white down here in our diagram. So what it's gonna look like is we have something being subtracted or added um, to x. So x minus h, and our variable h here is what represents our horizontal translation. And so this part right here tells us what we're looking for, and this makes sense. We're gonna shift left when h is less than zero, so that'd be some kind of negative number, which makes sense on a coordinate plane, negative would mean we're going to the left, right? And then positive would mean we're going to the right. The only thing I will caution you on is notice that our original equation has x minus h, right? So if we say h is equal to three, then that's gonna look like this, x minus three squared. So it looks like subtraction, but we're actually shifting to the right. And then if we said if h is negative two, then it would look like this, x minus negative two squared, and that would become x plus two squared, right? So with horizontal, you gotta be careful. It's kind of opposite of what it looks like. If it's minus a number, you're actually going to the right. And if it's um, adding a number, then you're actually going to the left, okay? So we see that down here, our blue parabola represents when we're translating left, and our red parabola is representing when we're translating to the right, okay? Now vertical translation, once again, we're starting with our parent function, that's what we see in white, our white parabola. And now we're going to shift up when k, so k is our variable now that represents a vertical translation. Um, and vertical is a little bit easier than horizontal, it is what it looks like. So if we have plus a number, we're going to shift up. And if we have minus a number, we're going to shift down. So the red parabola here represents when k would be greater than one. So we'd say x squared plus two or plus five. Um, and then the blue parabola represents when k would be less than one. So that would be like plus negative eight. So we would just write that as minus eight. So it looks a little bit more simple. All right, so let's look at our example. Notice we have x minus one here. So we need to think about that as being kind of opposite of what it looks like. So we're actually going to go right one unit and we're going to go up two. And so we have our parent function parabola here in white. So let's just say this is one unit, one unit, two units. And so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this parent function and I'm gonna paste it right here. Let's change it to orange because that's the color we've been working with. And now we're going to move the parabola to right here, okay? So notice what we've done, we moved our vertex, basically we moved all of our points on our parabola, but our vertex started at the origin, we moved it right one and up two, and here we are. And so that's what our new graph would look like after a transformation of uh, translation right one and up 
too. So for translations, we're not adjusting the size or the shape or the orientation of the parabola. We are just shifting or sliding left, right, up, or down. All right, so now let's talk about reflections. And we're actually going to talk about reflections, and then we're going to talk about stretches and shrinks before we get into our last examples where we'll actually handle both of these at the same time. So reflection on the x-axis, in my opinion, is what you're going to see most often because it actually does something to the parent function, whereas the y-axis uh, reflection, if, if we have a parent function, it doesn't really change anything about our graph, and we'll get to that in just a second. So for the x-axis, once again, we're starting with our parent function, f of x equals x squared, and that is our y parabola right here. And so for the x-axis reflection, we are actually making y, or we're making the outputs opposite, and that's what we see right here, opposite of f of x. And so f of x is equal to x squared, so that brings us to this step, and then negative x squared would be obviously negative x squared. Um, and so now that's going to take our white parabola, and it's going to reflect it over the x-axis, and now we have a parabola that opens down. And so essentially what happens is all we are doing is we are flipping over the x-axis, okay? Reflecting in the y-axis, once again, we're starting with our parent function, but it looks like we can't see it right here, right? Um, I know you can maybe see the, the arrows here that are white because the white parabola, the parent function, is actually in the same place as the pink, right? And that's what it says right here. y equals x squared is its own reflection in the y-axis. So for a y-axis reflection, we are not making y opposite. We are making x opposite, our input values. And so look what happens. If we have this x being squared, if we make it opposite, negative x squared is like negative x times negative x, which would be x squared, right? Negative times a negative. So it actually just ends up being the same exact parent function, y equals x squared, okay? All right, so now let's talk about horizontal stretches, shrinks, vertical stretches, and shrinks. So on the left side, we have horizontal stretch and shrink. Once again, we're starting with our parent function, and that is f of x equals x squared, and it is in white at the bottom on our diagram. So for horizontal, think about your horizontal axis is your x-axis. So we are going to be multiplying by the x variable. So here we have f of a times x. So a is our variable that represents a stretch or a shrink. And that's just gonna give us f of x equals ax squared. And with horizontal, typically you're gonna see that written in parentheses so that we really know we're multiplying the x variable first and not the output. So we have two options here. We could have a horizontal stretch, which is when we stretch away from the y-axis. So just think about like pulling the parabola to the left and to the right. And that's represented down here by our uh, light blue parabola. And notice that's when a is between zero and one. You might be thinking, uh, it seems kind of opposite, right? Because what kind of numbers is that gonna be? One half, one third, something like that. Uh, we think, oh, if it's a fraction, that should be a shrink, right? We should be getting smaller. Well, remember, just like horizontal translation, it's kind of opposite of what it looks like. So with horizontal, we, we say there's a stretch by a factor of a number. And for horizontal, it's actually a factor of 1 over a, whereas for vertical, it is a stretch or a shrink by a factor of just a. So for horizontal stretch and shrink, if we have, let's say, uh, 1 half a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 half, um, or, or if we have a one-half in our equation, uh, the factor is actually going to be one divided by one-half, which gives us two. So it actually ends up being um, a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. It just looks like a fraction in our equation, right? So horizontal, whether it's a stretch or a shrink or a translation, you gotta be super careful uh, to know which direction you should translate or um, if it should be a stretch or a shrink. Okay, so let's get back to the horizontal stretch and shrink here. So now we're going to talk about horizontal shrink, and that's when we are shrinking towards the y-axis. So that would be uh, this kind of a light green color here. And we are going to get a little bit more narrow. And that's when a is going to be greater than 1, because if we have, let's say, a is 3, it's going to be a factor of 1 over 3, and that would be a fraction 1 third, and that's going to make more sense in terms of a shrink. Okay. Now, vertical stretch and shrink, it is what it looks like. It's very much like vertical translation. Not too many mistakes happen with vertical. So here we are multiplying the output values, so a times f of x, and that's just going to give us ax squared, no parentheses there. So vertical stretch, we're going to stretch away from the x-axis, so vertical stretch like that, and that's going to be when a is greater than 1. So that, that makes sense, right? Vertical shrink, we are shrinking towards the x-axis, and that's when a is between 0 and 1, so 1 half, 1 third, something like that, okay? And so we see our parent function here in white, and we have our vertical stretch right here in the light uh, green and our vertical shrink here in the light blue, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and put the stretch and shrink and reflections kind of together and do these last two examples in this video. 
So it says describe the transformation from f of x equals x squared. So that's our parent function. And then we want to graph the function as well. So I've, got, I've gone ahead and already plotted and graphed the parent function parabola here in blue. And so we're just going to write down what transformations are happening and then graph the, the g of x function, for example, 1 here, and the h of x function, for example, 2. So if we look at g of x, we notice here we have a negative and we have a 3 right there. So this 3 tells me we're going to have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, right? Notice how this 1 fourth is in parentheses, so this is actually going to be a horizontal. So we can go ahead and write horizontal here so we know the difference. And we'll get back to the h of x function in just a minute. But now back to the g of x, we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. That handles the 3, but then we also have this negative here. So this is also a reflection over the x axis, right? x axis because it's not happening directly to x. We are going to find the output first and then make it opposite, okay? So what this is going to do, it's going to make our parabola be opening down and it's going to be more narrow. So instead of us having these two points here at 1, 1, we're going to have them basically up here at 1, 3, right? It's like we're multiplying by 3 for those y values. Let me zoom in here to erase this point. All right, good. And so now before we reflect, we would have this parabola right here. It would be more narrow, just like that, okay? And so now once we reflect it, we're going to have a point at 1, negative 3, and negative 1, negative 3. And so our new parabola would be right here. Let's see if I can get that. And we'll adjust this a little bit to make it match our points, okay? All right, and so this would be our final graph here. So let's take away this one we did at the top. And that's what it would look like. Negative 3x squared, we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, and we reflect it over the x-axis, okay? All right, let's look at our h of x function. We said it was horizontal because that 1 fourth is being multiplied directly to the x. And when we look at that, we say, okay, 1 fourth, probably a shrink because it's a smaller number. But remember, horizontal is opposite of what it looks like. So this is actually a horizontal stretch. And remember, it's by a factor of 1 over 1 fourth, so by a factor of 4, okay? Then this negative 2 here says we're going to translate down to units, okay? All right, so if we go to our parent function, uh, let's take note of these two points right here, 1, 1, and negative 1, 1. If we horizontally stretch by a factor of 4, instead of us having an x value of 1, we're going to have an x value of 4. So we're going to have 4, 1, and negative 4, 1. Okay, so let's take these two points away here. All right, and now our, our vertex is still here. And so right now we would have this parabola very, very wide. Let's see if I can get it to match up here. Okay, a little bit off on the right. There we go. All right, so we'd have that right there, kind of like step one. We haven't translated yet. And now we want to translate that down two units. So I'm going to take my two points here on the edge. So there's that one. My vertex will also go down two units and my point on the right. Okay, so let's see if I could just copy this parabola and let's paste it and bring it down here. And that would be our final graph. Okay, so open super wide because we are stretching it horizontally by a factor of four, which is a pretty decent size. And then we moved it down two units, okay? And that's how you can perform some transformations on quadratic functions. <laughs>